Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokémon White version! Last time, we emerged victorious, eventually, against the gym leader Berg and got ourselves the Insect Badge! It's been a long time, but wow, we are done with Castelia City. We have seen everything there is to do and see in it for the time being. There is more to it, but I, like I said, for the time being, yeah, you kind of get the point. This time, in which I start off looking like the Exorcist, good pixel aliasing right there, we're going to step into the Pokemon Center and see what our new badge does for us in the way of immediate rewards, as Clerk Numero Uno has some new items. We can already buy Hyper Potions. Kind of overkill, don't you think? Uh, I don't think you're capable of having a Pokemon with 200 HP by this point, not even close. Like... Already the lemonade is full health, and even if you were to use, say, an Audino or something really tanky, I don't see how this would be of any help. Maybe if you caught a Roggenrola and evolved into Bulldor and traded it right away and already have it fully evolved, then maybe? You can also buy revives. Kind of nice. I do appreciate having these early. Um, just kind of can save you a trip to the Pokemon Center. And lastly, the best of them all, Super Repels. These are the most cost-effective of all repels. Less time going into the menus, less time having to run into wild Pokemon. Finally, we can have that flow. I am so, so glad that we have those. But with our short little shopping trip done, I think now we're going to head on up to Route 4 and see if we can meet a certain someone who said they would be up there. I see. What? How is it? Huh? I like those little messages that pop up whenever you're in the area with the uh, people walking by. Generally, if you ever bump into one of them, they will auto-say something. Maybe I'll kind of grind it out right here. Yeah, grinding text with little NPCs I see. Okay, now they don't. Uh, woo! Wing, wing! Eep! Hi! Oh, we didn't get the I'm hungry guy. That one's my favorite. We go into the gate. Uh, actually. Let me see who's out in front. Ooh. Uh, no, no, I don't want to lead with that. I know what you lead with, and I don't want to do that. Good thing I didn't walk two extra steps. <laughs> hey, Blair. Um, in case you didn't notice, you were one I actually didn't hit on. Uh, you remember the promise you made on the extra end saver, right? So, let's get right to our Pokemon battle! But before that... They said we can have a Pokemon battle in the gate as long as we're careful not to break the electric bulletin board. The new and improved version of me! It's gonna go great this time! Let's start up our Pokemon battle again! She remembered to ask whether or not we can battle indoors? That, my friends, is what we call character development. But uh, she's still got a little bit of room to grow, so she's still not gonna be able to get the Pokeball out of her bag right away. She begins with Hurtier. Oh, not what I thought you were gonna start with. Level 18, normal type, intimidate for its ability with the moves Odor Sleuth, Bite, Helping Hand, and Takedown. You know what? Let's give let's give Terabyte the chance to fight right here, just because I thought she was gonna open with her starter, and that's what I was mainly afraid of. So let's not take this battle away from Terabyte. Let's actually let it have that. And yeah, you're just doing Odor Sleuth. The only thing I'm really afraid of on your moveset is takedown, and I'm pretty sure I can take it just fine. I guess I can take it up, is more what I'm saying. I can handle this. I can do this. I can do this. I can definitely handle this. Good. I feel like Terabyte is right at that point where it's able to handle fights all on its lonesome, and it's actually starting to be viable in combat. And it just got even more viable with the Moxie and level 23. Pansage is next. She will have whatever her elemental monkey is. It's level 18, grass type, glutton for its ability, with moves Lick, Vine Whip, Fury Swipes, and Leech Seed. Your Vine Whip might be scary, but I think my bite is scarier with that Moxie under my belt. Yes! Oh, this is why I love Moxie so much. If you set it up just right, use it at the right situation, you can just sweep right through teams. Her next Pokemon is whatever her starter is. I don't see the need to go over all of them. I think you know what she's got. Let's get greedy. Good, I outspeed you. I'm afraid of your arm thrust, though. I know that you got that as you get it as soon as you evolve into Big Day. Oh, boy. Oh, yes. Just keep going. Keep going. Go all the way. 
that won't be hard for you. Her last Pokemon is Muna. Level 18, Psychic type, forewarned for its ability. Thanks for telling me that Bite does the most damage to you out of my moveset. I appreciate you helping your opponent with the moves Yawn, Psybeam, Imprison, and Moonlight. And oh no, Imprison. I am so afraid of not being able to use Yawn on you. What a powerful move. Probably my least favorite Pokemon move of all time. It sounds so cool, but just like Incinerate, it has no right to have the cool name that it was given. That's that. I trained with Iris, but I still couldn't win. I can't be in your face about this victory now. I feel bad. You try so hard. <laughs> and I feel extra bad. I'll never be a strong trainer like you or Charon or Iris, but you know, since we left Nuvema Town, I've met a lot of people and I've been thinking about what I want to do in life. When you look at it that way, Pokemon have given me a lot of new experiences. Having my Pokemon stolen was just really hard and I felt really unsure. Still, I gotta say, I'm really glad I went. I've learned so much on this journey. And I also learned that being with Pokemon is really, really important. Okay, well, I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye, Blair. She's glad she began her life as a hardened fugitive on the road, but I need to go heal. We are back and I am so proud of you, Terabyte. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pet you. And uh, you turn away from me whenever I pet you because you can see your back sprite on the uh, status screen if you ever tap on them. Something you might not have known, but is kind of nice if you want to see it in not a uh, terrible blocky resolution like it usually is. I don't think it actually looks that bad. I think with sprite rotation, it's fine, even though they kind of doubled the size of the sprites back in Gen 1, and that game had less than stellar visuals. Still, I, I think it looks fine. It's just kind of nice to see what it would look like under normal circumstances. You have only 13 experience points to the next level. So glad I came into the screen to know that. I'm gonna keep the experience share on you. We're gonna throw Haywire out into the front. And we're gonna continue. Um, if you're curious about the Route 4 encounters, I went over them while we were going through Castelia for reasons complicated, just in case maybe you were skipping around a little bit and the city was running a bit long for your liking. Just thought I'd let you know that we're not going over them now because of that. We're also not going over them now because he wants to do something. Hey, Blair. I've been waiting for you to get the insect badge. Oh, excuse me. Sorry to keep you waiting. I, uh... Guess it's good that I explored the city first and didn't go to the gym first, and for you at least. And now it's time to see which one of us is the stronger trainer. Charon would have actually been up here since we ran into him outside of the gym. He would not have wanted to battle us until we had the insect badge, but it's just kind of a nice little detail that you can see that he is indeed up here training and deciding if he wants to catch more Pokemon. Speaking of new Pokemon that he's caught, P-Dove, level 20, normal flying type, super luck for its ability with the moves Quick Attack, Leer, Air Cutter, and Roost. That air cutter can be a little bit dangerous because of its increased critical hit chance compounded with its ability. Or you can just be an electric type like me and have it not mean anything to you whatsoever. So let's do it. Spark right to the face. And that's that. Terra Beggar to level 24. Catching up. And your next Pokemon, Servine, gonna be whatever his starter is. Maybe I'll say it this time, because it just feel kinda cool to list off their moves. It is level 22, Grass type, Overgrowth for its ability, holding a Citrus Berry with the moves Leaf Tornado, Wrap, Leech Seed, and Growth. It's a Servine, knowing the moves that you'd expect it to know. But, um, we didn't really get a chance to say it when P-Dove was still around, so I guess it will never know that I complimented it even more. In addition to wanting to like P-Dove, because I saw what it was going for in battle, I like P-Dove as a concept just in general. It's really, really cute, and the idea is that it's the urban pigeon slash dove, hence the name P-Dove, um, and unlike a lot of other bird Pokemon that are hinted to be intelligent, its Pokedex entry mentions that it's one of the stupidest birds in the Pokemon world, and I like that. Because it's the urban pigeon and dove, the bloodline favored only the cutest ones that humans were feeding in big cities, and thus they were the ones that survived, thus thinning out the bloodline and making them really, really unintelligent. I think that's a fantastic idea, and it makes it unique and stand out from the birds that came before it in its own way. And it fits into this world nicely with the whole urban theme that we have going on here. Heck, maybe it explains how stupid its stat distribution is. It's the problem is itself. Unfortunately for Haywire, uh, that didn't really turn out so well for you. Please have something that uh, Terabyte would get all the experience right there. This is kind of bad. I think I have, I think I have more faith in Ottawa. I probably should have checked what my speed stats were. I know that, um, I just know that Terabyte generally isn't really all that good in speed. Let's, uh, let's go for Fury Cutter, actually. Speaking of raising up our power every single move, please. 
A lot of big reactions in these fights. Wow. <laughs> just giving me a lot to yell about. I'm sorry. I don't mean to blow out your eardrums. It's just sort of happening. Ah, never mind. I was hoping to get that going. I guess Terabyte's got to finish the job because you guys can't pick up the slack. His last Pokemon, actually, no, not his last Pokemon, his second to last, I am in trouble, is Lightbird, level 20, dark type, unburdened for its ability, which means absolutely nothing to you, and it has the moves Pursuit, Torment, Sand Attack, and Fury Swipes. Luckily, I resist everything that I would be scared of, and I took eight whole damage to that attack, so I hopefully can just kind of wear you down with the Sand Tomb as well as the Sand Storm. I am a ground type, so I don't take any damage from it. That's also the case for Rock and Steel types. Some other abilities will resist it as well. Just trying to survive right here, get in as much as I can. I am legitimately worried for what is coming out next because I know it. I know what you're going to send out. And uh, let's go for the bite just to finish you off because it has a lot of extra torment. Well, I guess it's good I didn't use the same move again. <laughs> you saw that coming. There's the Moxie. The Moxie from Team Magma. Been waiting to say that. And his last Pokemon, Panpour, level 20, water type, gluttony for its ability with the moves Bite, Water Gun, Water Sport, and Furious Wipes. Once again, your ability is meaning crap. Your ability is meaning crap. That's accurate. <laughs> Sand Tomb or Assurance? Oh, God, don't make me choose. <laughs> assurance? Well, it's an Assure to hit, I'll say that much. It's just barely weaker than Bite was. 35 power. Yeah, I'm gonna go for Assurance. For once, I'm actually glad that I learned this. Please let the Moxie be enough. Oh no, 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 oh no! I love that clip so much. I really should watch that show, even though it's really weird from what I understand and from what I know that the title of the show is. Thank God. Terabyte, you are earning your keep. Man, trying to learn Swagger. That'll sharply raise the opponent's attack and confuse them. It sounds like a terrible move right off the bat, but confusion has you hitting yourself with your own attack stat. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Can be better for confusion, can, can be better for you, can be worse for you, depending on which way the luck goes. Me, on the other hand, I'm lucky. I think I'll give it a trial run. I'll ditch Torment for now. I will have the opportunity to relearn it pretty soon. So we'll just try it out, see if I ever use it. I would normally delete Assurance, but after how glad I was that I had it just now, I'd feel kind of dirty deleting it. We'll give it one more move. Impressive. But why can't I win? I thought you were supposed to be the cool collected one. That that whole whiny thing is kind of my shtick. The reason you are so tough is the trust between you and your Pokemon, but that shouldn't be a problem. I can get more out of Servine and my other Pokemon too. Can I just say Charon beat Berg with that team? How? I hope that Juniper greets everyone like that. That is just such a good greeting, and she, like, just leaves her hand up there while she is talking. <laughs> Blair, do you have a second? Professor Juniper, do you need something? I called Bianca, too, but I guess you didn't hear the call. I wonder what she's caught up in. Well, I suppose I'll just have to call her again later. Okay, I'll be waiting for you, too, in front of the gate to Nimbasa City. Um, hello? This sandstorm is terrible for reception. Nimbasa City's gate is straight down Route 4. We have our next objective and where we're gonna go, but luckily for us, we got this heel house right over here and I'm willing to bet Bianca didn't pick up the phone because she has gone into hiding. Her father must be hot on her heels right now. I certainly hope not. That sounds actually kind of sick for a parent to be doing to their daughter when you think about it literally. But um, can we take a moment while being backed up by this once again awesome music that I have to compliment and while we get into a wild battle that interrupts that awesome music, the attention to detail on Bianca's team. It might not seem like it right away, but it's one of my favorite little details. So she has her starter Pokemon. Sure, that's kind of to be expected. She has uh, the elemental monkey that you would have picked up if you had the starter that she had, which is kind of a cool detail. Charon does that as well. But the real kicker is that she said that she was going to go catch that Muna in the Dream Yard and actually did. Sure, I already mentioned that. And then her fourth Pokemon, which is, I guess, the actual real kicker. She has a Hurtier. And if you talk to Charon back on Route 1 during our Pokemon catching contest that the three of us had, he will mention that he and Bianca have two Pokemon on them each. And what can he catch on Route 1? A Lillipup. Every single Pokemon on her team has been addressed in some meaningful way and we know exactly how she caught it. Unfortunately, the same isn't true of Charon because he mentions that he had two Pokemon on him as well and you can't catch Purloin there, so either Charon's up to no good or something or 
untoward is going on. I don't really know. But I do like it for Bianca, at least. What, what did you say? Uh, deep in the desert, ahead of here, at the desert resort, there are some ruins that have become a little tourist destination. I got pretty bright very quickly. And I'm so, so glad that we have Burn Heal, because, you know, you better have it. But I'm also very glad that we have our super repels, finally. Just 200 steps without having to open the menu. How did I ever get along without you? I know how I ever got along without an ether because it's really not that helpful of an item. And actually, uh, now that we have our super repels, I guess I could mention that I picked up a nugget on the way back from the gym from pickup. Once again, it coming through for me. I want to reorganize my items a little bit. You can press select to do this and very quickly go up with the touchscreen by touching that bar on the side. Sure, that's a helpful shortcut. Another one is checking this little... No, 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 not what I meant to do. Crap, I misclicked. Uh, so much for telling you about a cool little fun shortcut that's gonna save you a lot of Man, I am sucking at these menus. <laughs> Sometimes these menus go a little bit too fast and I kinda lose track of what I'm doing. Not you, just me. Um, so really, don't be, don't, I, I'm not meaning to like gain sympathy with that. I'm just kinda telling it like it is. This little checkbox, I tapped it right that time. Whenever we press Y to bring up our dowsing machine, we now have some quick slots and we can have our item bag, or uh, our item pocket in our bag on quick, uh, on speed dial is what I'm trying to say. It's a helpful little shortcut, and yeah, maybe you are spoiled by the present day where it'll say, oh, your repel wore off, would you like to use another one? And that is an awesome feature that's hard to go back to not, ha not having. But that's not to say that these menus aren't really quick, very thoughtful, and just in general very well designed. Not just the battle systems are fast, the menus are too. And I greatly appreciate that. Don't know if it's just uh, the fact that I got done doing something so slow. I was so lucky right there that I didn't get... Good, 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 good. Just trying to sneak past you trainers because I'm kind of trying to make a beeline for something. This house! I don't mean to brag, but I'm a dig pro. I'll give you this TM so you can use it too! TM28 Dig! Finally a TM that I actually want to use on somebody! It's almost like I don't plan these teams out at all, right? Which is funny because I usually have a pretty good idea who I want to use, which kind of makes it even more embarrassing. Well, okay, it's not really that bad. These TM moves haven't been anything special up to this point. I'd say that this is hands down the best TM move that we've had. 80 power, but it has a turnip startup, but you're not able to be damaged on that turnip startup unless it's a certain move such as Earthquake. I definitely want to teach that to Terabyte. But Ottawa can learn it too. I'm trying to think about that. It would be super effective on fire, which wouldn't be helpful to me. It'd be super effective on rock, which wouldn't be helpful, because I already have water type moves for that. It would give you an answer to electric types, I guess. Maybe I will teach that. That's actually a pretty helpful tip now that I think about it. Uh, 35 power being used twice as opposed to 80 power uh, being used over the course of two turns and having 100 accuracy. I definitely want that. Also enables you to escape from dungeons right away. So it has a bit of utility purpose there. Yes, I'm gonna teach this to Ottawa. I feel like Ottawa's kind of been falling by the wayside. We haven't really gotten to see much of it in action. It wasn't that helpful in the gym. It wasn't really helpful in those battles. I'm gonna get rid of focus energy because of course, give you a little bit more type coverage there. Just barely, and looks like the uh, Lillipups have some items for us. Just swimming in new things to see and do. Escape rope, even though I have dig now. Potion. You guys have excellent timing with your items. You're just getting better and better. <laughs> See what you say. Sandstorms are terrible, but rock, ground, and steel type Pokemon can weather a sandstorm without damage. I just said this a few minutes ago. You're only just barely too late on that one. Sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to steal your thunder. Um, get it? Because ground type? <laughs> but I'll, I'll add a little bit more into what he was saying. In addition to the things that he said about sandstorms, rock type Pokemon will get a 20% buff to their special defense in sandstorms, which is a bit of a lesser talked about thing. And if you're using a rock type on your team, definitely have it out in front and take advantage of that while you're journeying through Route 4. It's not always that you're gonna just have natural sandstorms in whatever place you're exploring. Gonna throw up another super repel? What do you say? I'm gonna see the ruins, but I'm afraid I might get lost in the desert. It's really big, and sometimes you run into Pokemon. Well, I'd be in trouble if I'm not strong. I hear you can find newly discovered entrance of ruins if you go through the gate and just head straight. That actually rhymed, but don't worry. I'm sure the little boy that you're traveling with will protect you. I bet there's a... No. My instincts can't always be right. I guess they're broken today. Oh, well. Desert Resort is especially known for the Relic Castle. I'm a school kid, so I know this. Just like caves, you can run into Pokemon almost anywhere in the desert. But they don't like hiding in the pale sand, so if you walk there, you won't have to worry about battling. Ha! You had to go to school! 
to do that, to learn that. I learned it by having my mom just throw me out on the streets at age 10. Oh. I don't need no stinking education. Oh. I'm a trainer first and a doctor second. As always, when getting to a new area, if there is any sort of healer, I want to battle them right away just to make myself more flexible and not have to run back to town quite as often. Dr. Jetty. Well, guess what, doctor? This time, you are the guinea pig. Solosis. We haven't run into you yet, actually. You're a pretty interesting Pokemon that I've been really wanting to talk about, but unfortunately you're not encounterable in this area, so I don't want to spoil too much about what I'm going to say about it in its bio. Let's, uh... Well, no. He only has one Pokemon. I don't think I really stand to gain much by switching. Solosis is extremely bulky, which is why I was thinking about it. Yeah, no, I would have taken you out in the same amount of turns anyway. Getting even bulkier there with the light screen. Solosis has an ability that prevents it from getting hit from the Sandstorm right there, as you kind of saw in action. Yet another one of those little exceptions to Sandstorm. Sometimes abilities can negate it as well. Wasn't that big of a deal, though. Whenever I meet a trainer, I can't help having a battle. It's like he's some kind of crazed, over-obsessed doctor that has to maim other people's Pokemon just so he can cure them. I kind of wonder if there's ever been, like, a mad doctor throughout history that's done that. If not, good idea for a supervillain, or possibly a good idea for a uh, really creepy based on a true story movie about something that might have happened at one time. I really hope there was nothing like that in the news recently because I don't watch the news and I always feel really insensitive whenever something like that happens in the news and I talk about it and people are like, oh my god, you're talking about this and then I just, I'm like, uh, I didn't mean to bring up something like that. Black glasses! I think Sandile's earned its keep to the point where I don't need to keep the experience share on it, and it would be a crime to not pay homage to the anime and how Ash's Sandile always wore sunglasses. I'm not exactly saying that the black and white anime is great by any means, but I'll take that. <laughs> I still think it's kind of a nice way to pay homage, and besides, fight's good, and I kept assurance on it, didn't I? Might as well buff that as well, too, while I still have it. A fresh water. I'll be sure to commemorate my visit to the desert resort as well. Uh, up here! It appears to be a statue of a Pokemon. They all do. I want to remember this for later. I'm trying not to get sidetracked too much because I've been kind of making a beeline for this doorway. That's why we haven't gone over the new encounters quite yet because I wanted to run into the Relic Castle. There are two things I've learned about quicksand. If you try to walk through the middle, you'll fall. If you try to run through it, you'll fall. I wish I talked to you on my first playthrough because on my first playthrough, I went such a long time without knowing that because I was always running where everywhere I went I would just barely clip the corner of the quicksand fall right through and get so frustrated that I couldn't figure out how to progress forward in this place so I saved it for later got a revive right there ha you thought I needed to use another rappel that's exactly what you thought I was gonna say ha huh, you thought I needed a third badge to be able to buy a revive well I got news for you I only needed a third badge to find a revive for free on the ground so I sure showed you. Yeah, third patches are still just as useful as ever. I'm gonna skip past you guys. And yes, I could not figure out how to get past this for the longest time, as that implies. We try to move onward. Trainer, you still can't move ahead because there's so much sand. I will do my best to remove the sand. Give me a second. Like a nuisance, I'm gonna time you. You're the one I want to talk to. In other words, you there. I've been carrying two Pokemon fossils, but they're just so heavy. Would you take one of them off my hands? We have a choice between the Cover Fossil, which also on my first playthrough, I spent the whole game misreading it as the Clover Fossil and wondered what the Pokemon it revived had to do with Clovers because it's not a grass type, or the Plume Fossil. You can only take one of these. You can never get the other one, so choose wisely. If you want to complete the Pokedex, make sure you have someone to trade with. Out of these two, I'm going to pick up the Plume Fossil. Yes, I like it. It's a fossil of a bird Pokemon that lived in an ancient forest. But they said it couldn't fly. No matter. The museum in Nacreen City. I hear a Pokemon can be restored from fossils there. Because Lenora loves bones and fossils. Ah, duly noted. Your love for bones and fossils directly correlates to your ability to resurrect the dead. I'll have to remember that one for when I get older. But for now, we're going to go back to Nacreen City. On the way back, though, I bet you'd like to know which fossil you should choose, so let's get into that. When they are revived, they will be exactly level 25, so they are great to start fighting right after being born. It's best not thought about the logistics. But as for the cover fossil, it turns into Tirtuga. Its stats are pretty darn good to start out with, but it's one of the absolute slowest Pokemon in existence. To make up for this, Tirtuga starts out with Aqua Jet, a physical water type move with priority. You'll definitely get some good use out of that. It might even be able to beat weaker foes in one shot with it. 
but its main use is finishing off already damaged foes to avoid taking another hit and letting it tank for even more turns than it would have gotten to if it didn't have it. It's an alright tank, but I would say that the biggest drawback is its type being hard to slot into some rosters. Its type is definitely more geared toward offense type coverage than defense. Luckily for Tirtuga though, it doesn't have to just be a tank. I have been waiting to talk about this, but it learns a move that not many Pokemon do. Shell Smash. Basically, you destroy your own defense and special defense by one stage in return for sharply raising attack, special attack, and speed. It's a big net gain in stats, and hands down one of the best new moves added in Unova. I think maybe even one of the best moves of all time. It brought competitive viability to many Pokemon, and it would be a reason to consider Tier 2 all on its own. Beyond that, Shell Smash is such a good central part of Tier 2 that that might decide which ability you want. Solid Rock is an amazing ability that again not many Pokemon have, but Sturdy guarantees that under most circumstances, Tier 2 will get off at least one Shell Smash before getting knocked out, making it able to just do a lot more. I think Tirtuga is one of the most interesting and fun Pokemon we've seen yet. It's great. The other fossil Pokemon, reborn from the Plume Fossil, Arken. This trend kind of started with slacking. A Pokemon with great moves and beyond legendary stats, but held back by an Achilles heel of an ability. In this case, Defeatist. Cuts the attack and special attack in half just for having half or less HP. There is no roundabout way of having a different ability on any Arcan, they all have this ability. That's of course the biggest negative, but in terms of stats, even before it's evolved, just wow, look at those stats. It's one of the strongest things we've seen yet, and it gets significantly better after it evolves. It's strictly an attacker and crippled after it takes a hit but it's so darn good at what it does and learns strong moves from so many dang types. For all the Pokemon I've complained about having limited moves lately, this one stands out. You'll just have to play it very cautiously to make it work, because even though it has big positives, that one big negative is a big negative. We made it! I walked across that bridge for the 27th or so time in the name of science. You better appreciate it! I'm researching Pokemon fossils here. Yes, I have a fossil, don't I? I do. Gee, what took ya? The fossil you gave me turned back into a Pokemon. This is Arkin. Please take good care of it. I am gonna come out and say it right away. Arkin and its evolution are my two favorite Pokemon of all time beating out Lucario before them who held the title for many years, and Wartortle before those who held the title for much, much longer. This is what I mean when I said that in Gen 5 I either really, really love or really, really don't love the Pokemon in it. That's how extreme it is. Some of my absolute favorite Pokemon ever were introduced here, and heck, we still have quite a few more to see that I like a lot. It goes without saying, welcome to the team, Arkin. I wanted to grab you first and foremost because there's so many trainers to battle out in the desert resort and on Route 4, and a lot of them are worth your time to battle. I didn't want to fight them right before getting another team member so you'd be behind, and what do you know, he is the same level as the other two-thirds of our team, as two-thirds of the rest of our team. I had to think about how to word that quite right to be exactly accurate. Arkin is male, and let's see, you have serious nature and highly curious. So you have a neutral nature. Highly curious means that you have your highest IV in special attack. I'm not really sure how I feel about that because your special attack is competent, that's for sure, but not really the greatest. You better not have any 30s or 31s in your IVs because man, if you do, I'm probably gonna get accused of cheating because of you. Uh, not that I would blame anyone. I have been too lucky with these Pokemon up to this point and I could kind of go for having an average one who does not also have the gimmick of being super lucky because that seems to be a very common trait among our team members so far and I'd kind of like for you to stand out a little bit because I love Arkin so much. I think it's really cute in kind of a doofy way. I like its colors, and I just think it's a really cute Pokemon. I really love prehistoric reptilian birds, and uh, I guess kind of just going off, kind of getting off of the appearance a little bit, I thought that it would make us able to deal with a lot more types of Pokemon with what its immediate type coverage is looking like, 
And it would just be really fun to have a teammate that's super powerful under the right circumstances, but is not strong at all if those requirements aren't met exactly. Even removing the fact that it's my favorite Pokemon, I thought that it would be a super fun idea for a team member, and its type coverage just slots in very nicely for what we have. And I think with it joining, we're pretty good on attackers. We have Ottawa, who is a mixed attacker, Haywire, who is technically a mixed attacker, but I'd classify more as a special attacker, Terabyte is a dedicated physical attacker who has a really interesting ability and some pretty decent coverage. And then Arkin has coverage for different types and it works very differently. Kind of a reverse of how uh, Terabyte works to be perfectly honest with you. I think maybe what we're in need of most after this is a tanky Pokemon, but I'm not going to steal the spotlight from Arkin. This is its time. And as it is its time, I want to ask you what you would want to nickname this thing. I actually wanted to name the Arken myself because, well, it's my favorite Pokemon and I was so, so happy that we had an opportunity to finally use one on the team because there's also not that many opportunities in future games to use it. This is one of the only opportunities that I think I'll even get to do this if we do continue on with our journeys in the future. I tried thinking up names, came up completely empty handed after mulling it over for a few days. I turned to Google for inspiration, seeing if maybe I could look up some things about the Pokemon or about the type of Pokemon that it is, you know, weak but skilled. I tried looking up characters like that, maybe seeing if I'd get a little bit of inspiration for a name. I looked up weak but skilled characters. You want to know what came up immediately when I searched for it? Slacking, Shedinja, and Arkin. Yeah, great nickname for my Arkin. Arkin. <laughs> So I came up completely empty handed and I am god awful at naming things, don't we know it? So I am going to ask you once again, using Chugamon on Twitter, to give me a name for Arkin. This is due 24 hours after this video is posted and conspicuously Facebook is absent. I've been having some problems with Facebook lately, auto moderating comments and I just, I don't want to be accepting submissions through that if I can't be sure that I've seen all of the submissions, so I don't have any control over this. I just don't think that it lends itself very well to this sort of thing, so I swear I'm not being a shill. I really wish I didn't have to advise that because I wish Facebook lent itself well to that so I could open it up to more people. Wait, you're tangible. You are tangible. Come back here, tangible old man. I need to talk to you. I would go to the Kento region for business. Fascinating. Glad I talked to you. Well, um, with that. We have explored, well, what could be lightly considered exploring a new area, but we've made a lot of progress. We had two rival battles, and we got ourselves a new team member, also getting quite a bit stronger in the process. Next time on Pokemon Black and White, we're going to head back out to Route 4, Arkin is going to have its debut battles, and we're going to get acquainted with the many new friends that you can make out in the Desert Resort. You must really like my saliva if you got up in my face while I was saying all that. I'm having a battle called a job. It's quite tough. That's why it's fun. Glad to know you're so amused by this. See you guys then.